Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do a review of the sternoclavicular joint and also the acromioclavicular joint. We'll look at the relevant anatomy and talk about some of the basic features of each joint. We'll start by talking about the SC joint or sternoclavicular joint. So this is a joint on either side of the sternum that connects the manubrium of the sternum to the sternal end of the clavicle. So you can basically see this joint right here. Here's the sternal end of the clavicle where my mouse is on the left side. And then this would actually be the manubrium, specifically the clavicular notch where the clavicle sort of fits in. Now let's take a look at some of this anatomy. So here's the superior portion of the sternum. This is the manubrium. Down here you see the upper part of the body of the sternum. And there's a joint that actually connects the manubrium to the sternal body. Uh, it has several names. One is the sternal angle. Sometimes it's called the manubriosternal joint because it connects the manubrium to the sternal body. And sometimes it's called the angle of Louis. You'll also notice that at this joint right here, there's a facet for rib two that's partially shared with the inferior part of the manubrium and partially with the superior part of the sternal body. So this is actually where rib two attaches via its costal cartilage. Of course, there's one on either side. Over here, this is actually rib one. You'll notice that the proximal part of rib one is actually underneath the clavicle, but it'll actually loop around underneath the clavicle and attach posteriorly on the T1 vertebra. And roughly right here where the bone intersects with the cartilage would be the costochondral junction. All right, up here we have the clavicle, of course, and here's the joint capsule of the sternoclavicular joint on the left side. Now, the joint capsule has two thickenings, one anteriorly and one posteriorly that we can't see. And these thickenings are collectively the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular ligaments. Okay, they're not really so much independent ligaments, they're just thickenings of the SC joint capsule. Underneath the clavicle and connecting it to the costal cartilage of the first rib, we have the costal clavicular ligament. So this is the left one. Over here it's labeled, this is the right one. So it's named as such because it connects the clavicle to the costal cartilage of the first rib, so costoclavicular ligament. Now these three ligaments, the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular ligaments and the costoclavicular ligament, these three ligaments play a role in stabilizing the sternoclavicular joint on each side. There's also another ligament over here called the interclavicular ligament, which doesn't play as much of a role in stabilizing the joint, but it does connect the two clavicles to one another. So you'll notice here on the superior portion of the manubrium, we have the jugular notch. And actually that interclavicular ligament goes from one clavicle, it travels over the joint capsule, over the jugular notch, over the contralateral joint capsule to the contralateral clavicle. So that's the interclavicular ligament. The other thing here is if we take the SC joint capsule and cut it open so we can look on the inside, like we've done over here on the patient's right, we see the presence of this articular disc. Now, take a look at the articulating surfaces here of the two bones, the clavicle and the manubrium, uh, via this clavicular notch. The clavicular notch of the manubrium is concave, and the sternal end of the clavicle is convex. Now, these bones are arranged in such a way that structurally they ought to be a saddle-type joint. And in fact, really, according to the anatomy, this is a saddle-type synovial joint. However, what this articular disc does is not only does it anatomically separate the, the joint cavity into two separate spaces, but it also transforms the function of this joint into a ball and socket joint. Okay? So it actually behaves as a ball and socket, even though structurally it's a saddle joint. And this behavior leads to movement in all three planes. So the way to think about movements of the clavicle is the movements occur about axes, really mainly at the sternoclavicular joint. Over here, where my mouse is, this is the AC joint, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. Um, and certainly the clavicle does move up and down, back and forth, which leads to movements um, of the scapula here at the acromial process. But the movements are occurring about axes, mainly at the sternoclavicular joint. Okay? 
So notice that uh, the clavicle can actually elevate and it can depress. It can retract, it can move further posteriorly, or it can protract and move further anteriorly. And then it can also undergo posterior rotation, and then not shown here, anterior rotation. The way to think about anterior and posterior rotation is if you it took an imaginary dot, think of taking a sharpie and just putting a dot right on the superior surface of the clavicle, and then you rotate the clavicle. If that dot rotates more posteriorly, then it's posterior rotation. If the dot comes anteriorly, and you can see the dot right here where my mouse would be, then that would be anterior rotation. And so you can see here movements in all three planes. Okay. Now, the blood supply to the sternoclavicular joints are the internal thoracic arteries and the suprascapular arteries. And the nerve supply is from branches of the suprascapular nerve and also the nerve to the subclavius. Remember, the subclavius is going to be right underneath the clavicle. And so the, the nerve that supplies that muscle will also give some branches to the sternoclavicular joint. We can also review some structures on this picture right here. So here's our left clavicle. Here's the right clavicle, the manubrium of the sternum, and down here is the sternal body. We can even see the first rib right here. Notice that the first rib comes off of the manubrium right here via its costal cartilage. Then the bony part loops underneath the clavicle and kind of goes up a little bit where it attaches on the facet of the T1 vertebra. Here's rib number two. And then here's the costal cartilage of rib number two. Notice that its attachment is on a shared facet between the manubrium and the sternal body. And then here's the sternal angle or angle of Louis. All right, so here is the joint capsule of the sternoclavicular joint. And the thickening anteriorly is that anterior sternoclavicular ligament. Posteriorly, we would have the posterior sternoclavicular ligament, but we can't see that. Right here would be the costoclavicular ligament on the left. This would be the right costoclavicular ligament, and it connects the costal cartilage of rib one to the inferior portion, or infero-anterior portion of the clavicle. And remember that those three ligaments help stabilize the SC joint. We also have the jugular notch up here, and that interclavicular ligament that spans from one clavicle across the, the sternoclavicular joint capsule, across the jugular notch, to the contralateral capsule, to the contralateral clavicle. And then you can see right here the articular disc within the joint capsule that separates the, the cavity into two separate joint spaces. And then notice here on the manubrium we have that concave uh, surface for the clavicle. That's the clavicular notch on each side. Okay, so hopefully that's a good review of the sternoclavicular joint. Let's move on to the acromioclavicular joint. So again, some anatomy here. This right here is the anterior surface of the scapula. How do I know this is anterior? Uh, because the spine of the scapula is not visible. If we can see the spine, which would be about right here, then it would be a posterior view. So this space right here would actually be the subscapular fossa, where the subscapularis muscle sits. Here's the clavicle right here. This hyaline cartilage right here would actually be on the sternal end of the clavicle. And over here, closer to this green structure, this would be the acromial end of the clavicle. And this green structure right here is really the AC joint capsule, or acromioclavicular joint capsule. On the scapula right here, this is the coracoid process. All right. And then this very large joint capsule is really the glenohumeral joint capsule. So that's what we think of as the shoulder joint. Right here, this is the transverse humeral ligament. Remember that uh, we have the long head of the biceps tendon that runs up this groove right here, which is called the intertubricular groove or intertubricular sulcus or even bicipital groove. And that tendon of long head of biceps brachii runs underneath this transverse humeral ligament and will eventually curve around here uh, where it's actually going to insert, or excuse me, originate on the supraglenoid tubercle which is atop the glenoid fossa, not visible here because it's within this joint capsule. Also, based on this, we've got the intertubricular groove. So there's a lateral lip of it right here, and then there's a medial lip right here. Now, as I mentioned, this green structure itself is the capsule of the AC joint. It's a synovial joint, and it's a plain synovial joint, so it's going to allow gliding movements. Okay, um, And as we mentioned, it's a joint between the acromial end of the clavicle, and then the acromial process 
of the scapula, or sometimes just called the acromion. So the ligaments that are going to stabilize the AC joint are going to be the acromioclavicular ligament and the coracoclavicular ligament. So break this name down, acromioclavicular ligament. Well, this ligament should really just connect the acromion of the scapula to the clavicle. And really, the acromioclavicular ligament is really just a thickening of the joint capsule here, okay? just like we saw in the SC joint. Okay, so the thickening of this joint capsule is really just the acromioclavicular ligament connecting the clavicle to the acromial process. And then we have the coracoclavicular ligament, which is actually a set of two ligaments. So the first one is called the trapezoid ligament. That's the more laterally placed. Then we have the conoid ligament, which is more medially placed. Uh, notice the conoid ligament will actually originate on the conoid tubercle of the clavicle, and then it runs down to the coracoid process right here. But both of these ligaments uh, comprise the coracoclavicular ligament. And the coracoclavicular ligament really just stabilizes the clavicle in position by holding it in place to the coracoid process, and that in turn help stabilize the acromioclavicular joint because not a huge amount of motion is supposed to occur here. Again, there is some, but not a lot. And so you need to have that clavicle really more stabilized on its lateral end, okay? All right, now the blood supply to the acromioclavicular joint is from the suprascapular and thoracoacromial arteries. And the nerve supply is through the lateral pectoral and the axillary nerves. Also notice there's a coracoacromial ligament right here. This one connects the coracoid process to the acromial process. This structure does not stabilize the AC joint. All it really does is provide part of the roof of the subacromial space, which is a, a potential space underneath uh, the acromial process, but it does not help stabilize the AC joint. And think about it, it makes sense. This ligament just connects two parts of the scapula. In order to really stabilize this joint, it would have to connect some part of the scapula to the clavicle, right? Because that's what the joint is between, the scapula and the clavicle. So the acromioclavicular ligament connects the clavicle to the scapula, specifically the acromial process, so this can stabilize that joint. Coracoclavicular ligaments connect the clavicle to some part of the scapula. It's not the acromion, but it's still a part of the scapula. The coracoacromial ligament just connects two parts of the scapula, coracoid process and acromial process. So because it doesn't really connect to the clavicle at all, it can't stabilize the AC joint. But it does provide the roof to that subacromial space. Now we can take a look at this picture again and review a few structures here. Okay, so here's the patient's right clavicle. Uh, here is the, their, the head of their humerus, and it would be sticking into the glenoid fossa, which we can't actually see. Here's the transverse humeral ligament. Again, the long head of biceps brachii tendon will travel up that bicipital groove, and it will enter into this little tunnel here formed by the transverse humeral ligament, and it'll eventually loop around and originate off of that supraglenoid tubercle. This right here is really the glenohumeral joint capsule. Right here, we can't really see it, but the acromion or acromial process would be within this capsule, and this joint capsule itself is the acromioclavicular joint capsule. The thickening anteriorly is really that acromioclavicular ligament. Right here, we can see the coracoacromial ligament. It's connecting the coracoid process to the acromial process, but again, because it doesn't attach on the clavicle, this ligament cannot stabilize the AC joint. Over here, we have the coracoclavicular ligament. Uh, there's two parts of it, remember? The more laterally placed trapezoid ligament and then the curved medially placed conoid ligament. And collectively, those two ligaments make up the coracoclavicular ligament and they do play a role in stabilizing the AC joint by nature that they connect some part of the scapula, that is the coracoid process, to the clavicle. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully this video gave you a good review of the sternoclavicular joints and the acromioclavicular joint. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.